Hi everyone, I'm Faradon. As a computer science enthusiast, have you seen those cool kids participating in USA Computing Olympiad or ACM ICPC? I've always wondered how much I wish to become just like them. Today, I had the honor to interview a gold medalist in musical to share with us how to prepare for competitive programming from scratch and share some insider tips for us to become a pro. Would you like to share a little bit about your experience with competitive programming? My main experience with competitive programming was in Sci School. I did the Yusuko Gold Division, and the best I ever scored on the open contest was on 700. And during college, I was on the ICPC regional team for WashU. What are some tools and websites that uh, get you started with this practice? Um, so, of course, Yusuko allows you to test out their own problems. You can just log in and then you can make submissions and test it for your own practice. Yusuko does have its own training site, but I think most people use the, uh, at least when I was in high school, they used the Yusuko guide which is this website made by, I think, Benjamin Chi or something, uh, who is also like one of the problem writers. So that's a good resource if you're doing Yusuko. Um, there's also, of course, the competitive programming websites, like there's Lee Code, which everyone knows about now, I think, but there's also like Code Forces. And these often host like these contests every few weeks, which you can compete in. Um, those are also very international, so you have people from all around the world. And um, yeah, there's also some other sites like ADIS or ICPC. All right, thank you for sharing those resources. What are some uh, tips that you give to yourself when you first started? I think in terms of practice, it's very important to not immediately look at solutions or what they call like the editorial, mm -hmm. just because if you just look at the solution immediately, then you learn very little comparatively. I think that because it can be very hard to see how you get to a solution, like how did someone come up with this? You have to spend a lot of time on your own just thinking about it. And if you can't think of like a solution in like, it depends on the problem, but for you to go, I would say like 30 minutes then you can look at the solution, but don't look at the solution too quickly. You just have to spend some time thinking about it. That makes sense. So don't just give up too quickly. <laughs> yeah. And what do you think is the hardest part about competitive programming? It, in that it's not like you just learn a few algorithms in like a textbook and then you can just code up the algorithms and then you solve it. You have to come up with like new, like ingenious ways to use them, or you have to find some hidden connections and the problem between a problem there and a problem you've seen before in the past. So, or sometimes they even make you come up with ad hoc solutions or you have to come up with something entirely new. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the most difficult part is you can't really just learn something and then write it down you have to actually come up with new things, and that's a very difficult skill. Any encouraging words for uh, freshmen who wanted to start learning about competitive programming? I would say that it's, 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 it's a skill that can be applied to many things in life. So, I mean, even if you just want to do like software engineering, you'll have to do the technical interviews, which have questions that are kind of like these. Mm -hmm. So you, you gain a lot of like creative problem solving skill that's applicable to more than just programming. I think it goes to something deeper. Obviously hard work also matters a lot. Like all of the people who I've seen do extremely well in the ICPC or Yusuko, they were all, I mean, obviously they were all smart, but most importantly, they all worked like extremely hard. And they all spent a huge amount of time on competitive programming, which is why they got so good. So I would mm -hmm. say that while until like IQ, I guess, 
certainly matters a lot. Hard work can definitely transcend it, I think. Wow, this is very brilliant. I love that. And it's a skill that can be applied to not just the contest, but in life and career. Yeah. All right, thank you, Brian. It's such a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Here is an example using a gold problem, or it's platinum, so the hardest problem, about counting the number of paintings. The question is, given a grid and there are empty squares, we can fill the squares with water. But one requirement is that if we fill a square on the top level, for example, this cell, the water can trickle down to the cells below it or off the same height. So if uh, we fill a square here, the water can fill down here and also flood all the way through the sinks. If we fill a water on the level three, the water will only stay here. So this is one solution, one painting. We can also put water in this cell, so it will flood all of these squares next to it, but won't affect the cells above it. So this count as another solution. Uh, how to solve this problem and observe the patterns? The first observation we can make is that at each level, the number of painting is 2 to the k's power, where k is the number of uh, separate components in this level. For example, on level 3, there are three unique components. So we can fill the first component, this is one solution. We can fill the second component, or we can fill first and second, or first and third. This will be a total of 2 to the 3 number of solutions. Then, what other observations can we make? At first, we might be tempted to go from left to right, check how many solutions if we fill the first cell, how many solutions can we create for the second cell, and so on. However, we can actually go from bottom to the top because if uh, we, we are at this square and the bottom square is connected, then this and the right one can be connected with the below connected components. Therefore, if we already know the solution numbers of the cells below, we can actually use the solution from below and calculate uh, the solutions from above. And the third observation is, how can we store those information? One thought is to use the unifying data structure to store the connected components. For example, we can say that all the middle cells here, we can give them a label of two to indicate they are one component. So if at the cell above it, we meet a uh, connected component, we can also label this cell as two. And for the cells that are connected to the two components, we can also mark them as the same group. This is how we can come up with three observations and approach this problem step by step. In conclusion, competitive programming is not all about talent, but more about observing patterns within a problem and also consistent practice. All the resources about practicing platforms are linked below. Thank you, Brian Yan Yu, and thank you for watching. I'm Faradon and wish you a nice day.